Good morning, everyone. Well, actually, good afternoon for you. It's good morning for me. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of time, and I actually have a lot of ground to cover. So um, let's just uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, as you know, uh, Arca OS five was uh, released a few days ago, and uh, the reaction so far has been overwhelming. But I don't want anyone to get the idea that uh, we're at all finished with uh, with OS two, and this is the the end of the road for development. There are a lot of other things that are uh, in the um, in the pipeline. There's my video cutting out again. Hold on a moment. Let's see if I can get it again. No? One more time? There. Okay. So, um, let's go to slide two, and let's, uh, let's start from there. So, what I'm about to, to tell you are um, what we call forward-looking statements. So, they're projections. Uh, I'm not making any promises that any of this is actually going to be in any future release ever, but... Um, it is planned, or at least being discussed. Uh, some of these items are what we can, would consider wish list items, the things we'd love to see. I don't know if we'll have the development um, talent or time to put them together, but we're certainly going to try, um, at least if, if I have my say about it. Dates, um, I couldn't possibly venture a guess. But sometime between the the first update to uh, 5.0, which is going to be 5.01, and 5.1, we're hoping to get um, at least some of this stuff in there, and then hopefully more of it by 5.1. And we don't have any pricing available for any of this stuff yet. Some of these things are going to be updates that may be separate um, features. Uh, other things are going to be part of the uh, support and maintenance. Um, it's all it's all pretty vague, but I want I want everyone to uh, to know what we're what we're looking to do at least. Next slide. So support and maintenance. Uh, everyone's wondering what the story is about support and maintenance for uh, Arca OS 5. We're going to have just like we have two different releases of Arca OS 5, there will be commercial and personal support for uh, Arca OS 5. The file content, just like in the, the ISO, is identical. The difference is priority support versus, yes, we've got your ticket, and as soon as we have a break, we'll take a look at it. Um, and that's really just a matter of what we can afford to do. So if you get a commercial uh, license, and you don't have to be a commercial entity to get a commercial license, you can get a commercial license just because you want more support. Um, the support gets you, the commercial support gets you not only uh, prioritized ticket handling, but if you've got a feature request and you'd say, you know, it would be great if you could support my X, Y, Z, such and such, um, we'll look at it faster than if you have a personal license. And that's, again, just economies of scale. Uh, the difference between drivers and software subscription and the support and maintenance subscription. Well, there is some content that's in the drivers and software subscription that will be in the support and maintenance subscription. Uh, updated multi-MAC drivers, uh, updated UniAUD, updated USB. But the content that's released for the drivers and software subscription is not licensed for use on ARCA OS, and the content in the ARCA OS subscription is not licensed for use in the for drivers and software on non-ARCA OS systems. So they are two entirely different subscription channels. The ARCA OS support includes support for the entire operating system, not just the drivers and software released as part of the subscription. 
And that would also include updated ISO releases, which are not part of the existing drivers and software subscription. And as a result, the pricing is going to be completely different for the new subscription for uh, support and maintenance than for the existing drivers and software subscription. So they are completely different. If you haven't purchased a license for ARCA OS, you should not purchase a software, uh, drivers and software subscription at the same time. There goes my video again. Let me see if I can get back. Um, so next slide, please. There is a file on the ISO called readme2.txt, and that's sort of um, that's sort of the change log of release changes in the ISO. You may not need to download a completely new ISO just because we've made a change. We may have uh, made a change to a page in the installer. Well, that once you're already installed, there's no need to download a whole new ISO for that change until you need to reinstall. So um, that readme2.txt is linked from the wiki page on the Arkanoe site. Watch that for uh, release updates. And of course, we'll keep you informed on the, on the blog when we have new updates coming out. Next slide, please. So what do we have planned next? Um, obviously, barriers to entry. Uh, how do we get ARCA OS on new systems? Well, we've got to get, we have to reach the users who can benefit from ARCA OS 5, and we need to get the thing installed. So the two barriers to entry are really distribution and installation. So when we talk about distribution after we find the users, What's the easiest way for them to get the, the operating system installed? Well, right now, we only offer an ISO that needs to be burned onto a DVD. Uh, ultimately, we want to offer uh, VBox OVA files, which are ready to run um, virtual machines. Uh, other virtual machines that are ready to go for other hypervisors, because we do realize that there are people who use things besides VirtualBox. Uh, physical media. Uh, Arkanoe does not sell physical media. We do not sell any physical um, goods whatsoever, in fact. Uh, but our resellers will soon be able to offer uh, official uh, burned media. It's a, it's a beautiful looking uh, DVD in, uh, in a case. It will be directly uh, distributed, uh, drop shipped as we say in the, in the trade. Um, and we're hoping to be able to get those offered within the next uh, week or two. Bootable USB stick. Well, we didn't have time to finish our investigation of bootable USB sticks. Um, we are looking at a method for doing that. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be a universal method for booting from a USB stick yet. So. We want to look at that a little bit more closely and then be able to offer a bootable USB stick or at least an image to put onto a USB stick to make it bootable. And of course, um, alternative packaging. Um, maybe, there's, maybe there is still a, a market for CD and floppy installations, although I can't imagine anyone wanting to go through 45 floppy disk images. Um, but there are systems out there that are um, that are without optical drives. Uh, Preloaded um, hard drives and SSDs would be another great avenue for some of our resellers to to offer, and I believe that some of them are planning to do that. So those things will be um, will be on the. Um, on the table for discussion going forward. Next slide, please. 
So the next the next thing we want to look at is um, localized versions of um, of Arca OS. I think that uh, German and Dutch are going to be the 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 initial targets for that. I'm not sure what other languages right away we're going to we're going to do. Um, ultimately, we want to be able to offer as many languages, uh, certainly as um, Warp Four had, um, perhaps more. The uh, we would like to be able to offer a, a language pack conversion, so that if you have an English Arca OS five, you can convert that to your preferred language without having to reinstall the whole operating system. Um, the installer itself is NLS enabled. We just have to do the translations and the rest of the work. Um, so you should be able to boot from the DVD, select your language, and then install, go through the installation procedure in your, your preferred language. Next slide, please. Another challenge that we have is migration from existing OS2 and ECS to Arca OS. Um, currently, Arca OS 5 requires a fresh installation. We want to be able to migrate from those other distributions to Arca OS 5. It will require a new Arca OS license, so it's not going to be the same as an upgrade from Arca OS 5 to Arca OS 5.1. Um, what the migration process will need to do is evaluate the current system, archive the old uh, install, and then do the Arca OS install and optionally uh, put the desktop back in essentially the same uh, layout as it as it was before the uh, the migration, but uh, with the new Arca OS style applied to it. So as you can see, it's not just a simple process of pushing the Arca OS five content onto the existing drive. Um, the preservation of what's there is the is the tricky part. Next slide, please. An upgrade from 5.0 to 5.1 um, will not require an additional um, MCP2 license. The MCP2 license, by the way, is included with Arca OS 5.0. So once you have that license, uh, we're not updating the, um, the IBM components. Or if we do update the IBM components, they would be Arca OS updates. So no more no more content delivered by IBM. So you should be able to get a pretty good discount on uh, an upgrade license from 5.0 to 5.1. And it should be fairly straightforward because we're not playing, we're not changing the layout on the, the disk of uh, 5.0 to 5.1. Or if we do, it would be very minimal and we'll be able to handle that easily. And we should end up with um, a system that is indistinguishable from a freshly formatted 5.1. Uh, it will most likely require booting from the installation media, so you won't be able to boot from your live system and then apply the upgrade. But we'll see. We really haven't looked closely at how we're going to handle the process yet. Next slide, please. So in the meantime, uh, from between 5.0 and, and 5.1, uh, driver development continues over here. We're going to maintain UniAud. That doesn't mean that we're going to uh, enhance UniAud. There goes my video again. Let me see what I can do about that. Um, maintaining UniAud does not mean that we're going to upgrade UniAud. Uh, I really don't know what um, what our long-term plans are going to be regarding um, the handling of UniAud. Um, we do want to replace UniAud with a, a new FreeBSD-based um, audio driver. We'll have to see 
where we go with that and when that when that all happens. USB 3 is in the works. I know that David has made some considerable um, progress in that regard. So I would expect that we will have USB 3 sometime before ARCA OS 5.1, um, but I don't know when exactly. Multi-Mac work continues. Um, we're adding support for new chipsets. The Multi-Mac Wi-Fi drivers are in the works. Um, the goal is to replace um, uh, the existing uh, Gen Mac drivers entirely with Multi Mac drivers. Uh, Gen Mac is non maintainable. So, Gen Mac is included as a convenience in ARCA OS 5. Um, assuming we have Multi Mac Wi Fi that covers those chips that are, that are covered in Gen Mac, then for 5.1, um, we will probably not distribute Gen Mac with the operating system. Um, and as these drivers are updated along the way, there will not be a need to wait for 5.1. They will be released as updates to 5.0. And you'll see them either in a 5.01 media refresh, a 5.02 media refresh, or an interim uh, update or fix. Next slide, please. So Snap, um, Snap is completely rebranded with Arca OS 5. It is Arca Noe Snap Graphics for OS 2. Um, if you do find any references to SciTech uh, in your Snap distribution, please let us know. We, um, we called in a Jesuit priest. We performed an exorcism. Uh, we think we've, we've banished all the SciTech references. Um, but if you find one, uh, please let us know because it, it really doesn't belong there anymore. Um, going forward, we want to provide better widescreen support. Uh, and to do that, we need to add new chipsets to, uh, to Snap. We are very fortunate to have um, uh, a number of people working on Snap, including uh, Mikhail, uh, one of the original developers. Um, so we are hoping that we'll be able to make some, some good progress with Snap uh, in the coming uh, months. Snap updates will be part of the ARCA OS support and maintenance. Snap will also be a separate standalone product. So for those um, uh, customers who are still running ECS or OS 2 or 4, um, and there are reasons to not upgrade to ARCA OS 5, um, War 4 probably has better backward compatibility to older systems than ARCA OS 5. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't install the latest Snap on that. So um, Snap will be offered as a standalone product. Um, and the updates that we do for the Snap special edition that's in ARCA OS 5 will be in that standalone version of Snap. Uh, there'll be more on Snap a little bit farther down. Next slide, please. So Arca OS Desktop, which is really X Workplace Lite, uh, will see some more fixes and, and widgets. Um, the Pulse widget is really on my short list of things that we need to get fixed. Um, I don't know if, I don't know how many people are aware of this, but the Pulse widget is terribly inaccurate. Um, run the pulse widget and then open up a window and run cpu.exe and take a look at the difference between what the pulse widget reports and what cpu reports. Um, the only thing that the pulse widget does is it tells you when the system is busy and when it's not busy. Beyond that, you can't trust it for anything else. Don't believe it, it lies. Um, uh, we wanna have some new widgets. Uh, Alex proposed an ARCA button, which is a, a more usable X button. Um, we want to see about implementing that. Uh, we want to include a Kerberos ticket manager. 
So aside from our credentials manager applet, the Kerberos ticket manager would be just a widget on the the X Center that would monitor your Kerberos ticket status and allow you to renew tickets, um, destroy tickets, and request new tickets. There goes my video again. Uh, let me get that back. And meanwhile, if there are, are more um, widgets that you'd like to see, um, please feel free to suggest something, um, and we'll we'll take a look at um, we'll take a look at putting them into the into the schedule. I'd like to see a world clock uh, widget. Uh, Alex has a nice world clock application. I'd love to see that implemented as a widget. Um, at Arkanoe, we routinely have to schedule meetings across a half dozen time zones, and it's hard for me to remember who's in what time zone all the time. Next slide, please. Selective install. Um, selective install is a, um, it's a holdover from Warp 4. We've done our best to mask out some of the least useful parts of selective install. Um, but it still is not very useful. Uh, it was much more useful for Warp 4 because all of that content was pertinent to Warp 4. It's not pertinent anymore. Now we have a number of other applications that are bundled on the DVD under the CID server ARCA package directory. Um, and we'd like to pull all of that stuff together and have it available from selective install. Um, look for that somewhere between 5.0 and 5.1, most likely with the 5.1 release. Uh, it should have better overall integration. Um, if any of you have looked at the new selective install for networking application that Alex built, um, that kind of clean, crisp user interface is what we're looking to get for selective install. And we want to get rid of the last bit of Warp 4 branding that's left in it because talk about a 1990s holdover. Um, it's time for that stuff to go. Next slide, please. The Modernized Documentation Initiative. Uh, look for more of this uh, online in the coming months. Um, this is sort of a pet project of mine, uh, kind of the way uh, Lucide became a pet project of mine. Um, I am absolutely weary of some of the um, content in the original Warp 4 documentation, which, which is still with us in ARCA OS 5. We don't talk about performing operations on PCs now the way we did in 1995. We just don't. And uh, when you need help, the help needs to be accessible. In other words, it you need to be able to read the help and read one sentence and not have to try to decipher what the gist of that sentence is. It should be immediately apparent. So what we want to do is we want to replace that old documentation with new documentation, new well-written documentation. And of course, um, it's not just a matter of doing that in English. The rewritten documentation will need to be translated by our team of translators so that it's accessible in the other languages that we'll be producing. Next slide, please. The 5.1 development cycle uh, is scheduled to kick off late uh, 2017. Uh, so expect maintenance and refinement for 5.0 uh, in the next few months. Um, we definitely, I don't know that we're going to actually start coding 5.1, but you know, a lot of times as you're planning, you start coding anyway, just to see how things look and, and how they work. Uh, so we do expect to begin, uh, begin those discussions in earnest before 2018. 
I mean, we're discussing parts of it now, but I'm talking about actual um, development plans and, uh, and timelines. Um, we have no planned cutoff date for 5.0. Um, many times, um, operating system publishers will, will state, well, we're going to support this version for two years, and then that's, that's the end of it. Um, that's not the case with ARCA OS. So when we release ARCA OS 5.1, if you're still running ARCA OS 5, that's fine with us. Uh, if there are updates that do not apply to 5.0, we will tell you that. But an update subscription for ARCA OS will support ARCA OS 5 and ARCA OS 5.1. Um, Obviously, that may change at some point in the future. I don't know in 10 years whether we're going to still be supporting ARCA OS 5 or whether we'll be supporting ARCA OS 6 or ARCA OS 7 at that point. But um, in the meantime, we have no plans to cut off support for ARCA OS 5. Um, the 5.1 development cycle will probably run similar to the 5.0 development cycle. We're hoping that it will be a little faster than that. There goes my video again. Um, but uh, in, in general, the plan will be to, to work it uh, the same way with a, uh, uh, an alpha period and then a closed beta before we go to release. Next slide, please. Other things that we're looking at uh, supporting, uh, UEFI and GPT. Um, we realize that not every UEFI system has um, a compatibility support module, a CSM in it. Um, I hope everyone is familiar with these terms at this point. Um, UEFI, um, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, um, uh, CSM is a compatibility support module, which essentially emulates a traditional uh, PC BIOS. Um, these are going away, so we need to deal with that eventuality. Right now, it's one thing for us to say that you need to have a machine that fully implements a CSM, but in five years, I don't know how many more of those systems are going to be built. Our goal for ARCA OS to remain um, viable is to be able to support uh, installing and running ARCA OS on new hardware. In order to do that, we need, uh, we need to support systems that no longer have a CSM in them. So we're looking at that. Um, right now we have a two terabyte physical disk size barrier. Um, we're looking at ways to work around that. Um, and to natively support GPT, GUID partitioning uh, tables. Um, and we want to be able to coexist with other OSs uh, on systems that are, that are using GPT partitioned uh, drives without having to wipe the drive and reinstall everything. Next slide, please. So new products that are uh, along the way and um, being developed in parallel with, with ARCA OS. Um, some of these are just incubating, meaning they're still in the thought processes. Uh, no code has been written, but we're thinking about ways to do them. ARCA Updater is a product which um, still hasn't been completely formalized, but essentially it includes the MCP2 components, the kernel and the licensing for ARCA OS, and one would install that on top of an existing workforce system. Um, how, that, how that differs from a migration, we're not entirely certain yet. Um, but we're looking at how, we're, how we would implement that. Let me get my video back. Um, uh, snap version 4 or a later SNAP 3. Uh, we haven't decided on a version number. Um, support for more chips and more output ports. Uh, 
DVI, HDMI, um, DisplayPort, DisplayPort 2. Uh, we want to provide support for those, those outputs. We've talked about this before. Um, Snap has sort of taken a back seat to Arca OS 5 in general. Um, we'd like to get Snap uh, pushed up the stack to the, um, to the current working list uh, sooner rather than later. Credentials Manager, I mentioned before, it's a little applet that allows you to maintain your um, Kerberos credentials and tickets, as well as other, um, other logins for um, non-Kerberos connections. Uh, that's uh, in, in beta, actually, or alpha. Uh, another product of ours that uh, that we've developed through our consulting work is the OS2 Active Directory Connector. We have the ability to authenticate against uh, Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2016, um, and map drives and utilize the latest file transport uh, to them, and. In addition, if there are applications that require um, the old LAN server components, we can fake those applications into believing that they're still running in that environment, yet really run in a modern Active Directory environment. Um, this is what we do with, that, with the OS2 Active Directory connector that will become a boxed product at some point, and we will be able to offer that to more clients. The new audio driver that we've discussed that's going to be based on FreeBSD is um, in progress. I don't know exactly where that progress is at this point, but we do, uh, we do plan to release it somewhere along the line. Uh, the multi-Mac Wi-Fi drivers, Expect Intel support to be the first Wi-Fi drivers available, um, and then we'll follow those with uh, with other popular chipsets. Books and eBooks. Um, as we were working on the installation guide, one of the things that came to mind was uh, the series of books, the missing manual. Um, there really is a lot to be written about Arca OS and how to get the most out of it. And um, we'd like to work with, uh, with some, some people to write that material and then offer that perhaps as um, uh, Kindle books or uh, other uh, non-paper versions. Publishing on paper is very expensive these days. Um, but there is, uh, there is certainly um, a the availability, I don't know how much need there is. Um, I certainly like reading stuff about uh, OS2 still. So we're going to explore those uh, avenues. ARCA OS certifications. Um, in our consulting work, we run into situations where the people who implemented OS2 in the enterprise have left the enterprise and there are new people maintaining the systems and they really don't have any training in OS2. Uh, and they don't necessarily uh, understand all there is that would give them a better, um, a better feel for the capabilities of the operating system. So I've already reached out to um, uh, view uh, testing uh, and I've talked to them about putting together a, um, a certification program for ARCA OS. Um, obviously certification isn't for everyone but OS2 still is available in um, large enterprises. It's still used. There's still a need for it and where there's a need there's a, a need for qualified engineers to be able to use it. So the certification will help um, determine who's a qualified engineer. Next slide, please. 
So development suggestions. Um, this would be for funded work, meaning someone's got to come to us and say, we want to pay you money to develop drivers for these things. And we are definitely looking at, at, at doing them. Um, a Bluetooth stack. Um, you know, this was something that perhaps wasn't all that important uh, a few years ago, but nowadays we have Bluetooth headset devices. Obviously, we would like to have native video conferencing available for OS2, which, um, which means that uh, having wireless headsets and microphones uh, would be a good thing. Um, but that work needs to get funded. Uh, SAS support for, for servers. Um, let's face it, SATA isn't the only connectivity option for hard drives and SSDs. Um, so we'd like to be able to provide a, a, um, an SAS driver. Uh, drivers for SATA RAID. Um, beyond uh, basic SATA array drivers, you know, a lot of that stuff is implemented half in software and half in hardware. Um, so we'd like to be able to fully support more of that uh, technology. And of course, we still get questions, are you going to support IPv6? Well, we'd love to. We would love to provide a dual stack. We'd love to replace the existing uh, BSD-based uh, IPv6, uh, IPv4 stack in, in OS2, but all that work needs to be funded. Um, it, someone's got to step up and say, we have a need for IPv6, and we would like to pay you to develop uh, an IPv6 stack, and we will seek out the talent to do that. Next slide, please. And yes, everyone, I am coming down to the end of it, and you'll be able to take a break and eat soon. Um, Partnering with, with hardware manufacturers, uh, we would love to discuss um, partnering with laptop manufacturers. Small independent shops, um, I'm looking at some machines from System76 that look very interesting. Um, yes, I know ThinkPads are, are standard portable machine. But they're not the only portable machine. We ought to be looking at um, at broadening those horizons. Um, tablet manufacturers, obviously, we need to stick to x86-based uh, tablet platforms. I don't know how many of those there are, but I do know that there are some small companies making specialized tablets. We'd like to talk to them about getting Arca OS installed on those. Desktop machine support obviously uh, is important for us because OS2 is a desktop operating system. It's not a um, it's not a mobile platform. So to us, uh, workstations are a very important platform for us to support. Uh, we want to we would love to partner with some uh, manufacturers to make sure that that um, the hardware and software are compatible. And device manufacturers, uh, storage device manufacturers, video um, hardware manufacturers, we'd love to add more chipset support to, um, to SNAP and uh, ensure that, that Panorama works with, um, with more uh, modern video chipsets. Um, so we'd like to explore those avenues with, uh, with device manufacturers. Next slide, please. So how can you help make all of this stuff happen for ARCA OS? Well, first of all, there's an importance to proper license self-metering. There is no registration key required to install ARCA OS 5. We made that decision early on in the process. There are no 97 character strings that need to be carefully typed and if you mistype one letter, the whole thing is ruined. Um, nothing that you need to try to frustratingly import into the install to get it to install. Instead, um, ISOs are personalized, and everyone is on the honor system. So if you are installing Arca OS on five machines, we uh, fully expect that all of you 
here today are honorable people and you will purchase five licenses because our agreement with IBM and with our other third party providers is that we have to pay them for the number of licenses that we sell and that number should equal the number of licenses installed. Um, so it's very important to, to do that. We need funding in order to do the work for future versions. The only way we get funding is by selling licenses. So it may not seem like much. It may not seem like, well, do I really need to give them another $200 for two more licenses? Well, that $200 really does make a difference. And so license self-metering is very important. Um, recommendations, demonstrations, introductions. Talk about ARC OS. Um, if you're in a, a brick and mortar computer store, um, talk to the staff there about ARCA OS. Um, bring in a DVD, show them what it looks like and try to install it. Um, spend some time, um, do some demonstrations for friends. Um, word of mouth is always the best re uh, recommendation, the best referral. Enterprise consulting referrals. Uh, we would love more consulting work. Consulting work uh, keeps the doors open and the lights on. So if you know of a large company that has OS2 still in use, um, whether that's in uh, manufacturing, finance, whatever, doesn't, doesn't matter the industry to us, please let us know, make the introduction um, what's good for us is good for the entire community. Uh, YouTube and other online rich media, um, please feel free. Do some, do some YouTube reviews of ARCA OS. Show it to people. Uh, get those, those videos online on, uh, on YouTube and, and other places where, where you can, you can share your experiences outside of print. Um, Let's, let's try to broaden the base. There are a lot of people who are completely disgusted with large software shops wanting to steal, and I use that term with a capital S, steal your personal information and use it for their own purposes. We don't do that. Um, when you register with, Ar with, with Arkanoe, when you get your, your download, that's as far as your information goes. We do not sell, harvest, uh, or otherwise data mine that information for any purpose other than to notify you of updates to the operating system. So um, there are a lot of people who are absolutely disgusted with large software houses um, stealing that information and using it for whatever purposes, marketing, um, advertising, what, whatever. Um, we don't do that. And those people are looking for an alternative. Um, tell people that there is an alternative. And the fact that OS2 is a 32-bit operating system in a 64-bit world really makes no difference because you know what? It works. OpenOffice works, Firefox works, CMonkey works. All of the existing uh, software that was, that was written for OS2 2.0 on forward works just fine under ARCA OS. I have yet to run into something that does not run with our new kernel. Um, there's a, there is plenty of software available. And obviously we want to expand that base. We, we want more uh, more software and more new software. Um, and the only way we're going to do that is by broadening the base. We need more people uh, ordering licenses and more people using the, the platform. Advocacy in other ways. Uh, online forums. Just go and talk about ARCA OS. Talk about OS2. Um, talk about the difference in exp user experience between ARCA OS and other platforms. I was setting up last night to do this 
um, presentation today, uh, and I'm I actually uh, I had to resort to uh, running Skype under Linux because we don't have a native video conferencing application uh, under OS2 that is Skype compatible, and I really didn't want to I didn't want to use that other operating system from Redmond, Washington, and um, I can't tell you how long it took me to get this all set up on Linux. It was a real pain. And I am a certified Linux engineer. So um, there are alternatives. Linux is not the be all and end all of alternative operating systems. Make sure that you tell people that. Uh, localization. We always need um, translation help. Translation is a major pain in the neck. Um, it's very labor intensive. Um, if you are multilingual at all, um, we could use some help. Contact us. Beta testing, well we actually do have a good core group of beta testers, but um, I'm always interested to hear of other people's um, setups and availability for, for testing on different platforms. Um, so please um, touch base with us. If you have something odd and you say, well, I'd like to test Arca OS 5 on this particular machine, talk to us and we'll see if we can get you added to the beta list. And warp stock participation. Uh, what you're doing today is extremely important. So you should think about presenting at warp stock. You should think about how you use the operating system that um, might be beneficial to others. Things that you've learned about using the operating system over the past couple of decades. All of that translates well to Arca OS 5, um, but perhaps we can do it better in Arca OS 5. Perhaps we already do it better, or perhaps there's something from Warp 4 that we should look at moving into Arca OS 5 to do that better. Um, talk about that at Warpstock. Come to Warpstock. Um, it's a great way to get involved and, again, a great way to expand the user base. So the last slide is just questions. Anyone have questions for me? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm Keith here. Uh, can you hear us? <laughs> um, uh, only, only in the background. So you'll have to repeat for me, Jerome. Okay. The question is: You were saying about demonstration. Is there any plan for a demo DVD so you can run that on any hardware and show you what uh, Arca OS two, or sorry, five point zero can do? So. Okay. I did hear that. I did hear that. Um, okay, so here's the story about demo DVDs. Our licensing with IBM does not allow us to distribute demo discs of any sort. Um, so that precludes uh, free demonstration, uh, trial discs, uh, or anything like that. So what you need to do is you need to take your own media and install it on a system. You should think about your media as a book. Um, so if you want to test it on another system, take your installation media, test it on that system, just make sure that it's removed when you remove yourself from the presence of that machine. Okay, that seems to answer it, yes. Okay. Any more questions here? No? You seem to have made a very good uh, presentation then. Wow. <laughs> That's it. So everyone's, everyone's an expert now on, on everything <laughs> that, that we're doing with, with our